Hey, hey guys, welcome to church. Hope you guys had a good day today, enjoyed the sun, got out to vote. Um, we're going to start tonight by singing, so please stand and sing with us.
Yeah.
Hey everyone, welcome to church tonight. It is so good to see you all here. You have picked a cracking night to join us. A particular welcome if you're new or and if you're a regular. My name is Jamie um, and I'm excited to be here tonight. We are continuing through our one Peter series, if you're here for the first time, and tonight we're looking at um, A New Hope and looking at 1 Peter and Exodus. Um, A couple of announcements before we rip into things today, guys. Um, We've got a Spring Into Prayer event coming up. Um, That's tomorrow afternoon. Details are on the screen. If you want to come hear about the work our missionaries do in Australia and all around the globe, great opportunity um, to yeah, hand it up to God and to thank him for all the great work that's being done and to pray uh, for our continued um, yeah, strength, perseverance of our uh, missionaries. Our next announcement is Christianity Explored. Awesome. If you want to know more about the Bible, then this is a, the perfect course for you. So what it does, it looks through the Gospel of Mark, come along, bring your questions, find out who Jesus is, why he came to the earth and what he came for. Um, So it starts this Tuesday. So if you want to find out more details, you can jump online. Come chat to me, Andrew Punch, or someone who came with you tonight. I would highly recommend that one. Also, Summer Fest. Woo! So this is our our church going on mission during summer. Um, So it's coming up. It's not long away. And we still want volunteers and help. So at our event, at our Summer Fest mission, we have... Kids program, youth program, and adults program. And there are areas which we need help in across all of those, no matter what talent and skills you have. Um, So if you would like to find out more, um, we have a uh, 7th and 8th of October, I believe. We have, oh, there you go, team dates. Monday 15th, shocking, I got that. I'm all over the shot with that slide. That's bad, eh? Uh, Anyway, if you want to find out more, come chat, chat to me again, chat to Andrew, chat to Punch. We'd love your help. Oh, there you go. Monday, 16th of October, 7.30 to 8.30 here at church. Um, Yeah, awesome opportunity to serve God and take uh, him out to the community and invite them back in. Also, tonight, if you like games, specifically board games, then it it is going to be a cracker. I hope you brought a lot lot along. You know what? I'm organising it, and I forgot board games, but I know some of you brought stuff along tonight. I'm having a shocker. Um, I'm hoping to play Catan. And if anyone can beat me in Catan, um, good luck. So hang around after. We'll kick off at 7.45. Go grab your dinner. Bring it back here. Um, We'll set up some tables in the church. It's going to be heaps of fun. No matter your age, you're all welcome. Awesome. I'm now going to invite Stephen. He's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Uh, I'm Stephen. I've got my glasses. I can actually read. I have the privilege of praying, um, so get straight into it. I'm going to finish off with reading the beautiful prayer from the end of Jude. Good book. Uh, Let's pray. Dear God, you are majestic and holy. You are worthy of receiving all glory, honor, and power. For you, in your wisdom, created all things, and by your will they were created and have there been. Lord, we come to you before, right now, as sinners. We have broken your law, ignored your way, and fallen short of your glory. Thanks you, thank you that despite our rebellion, you sent your son to take our punishment for our sins and die for us. Thank you that through the resurrection, we have given, been given new life. Thank you that only you, in you, we can find true purpose, identity, and hope. Lord, please renew our minds and transform us with this truth so that we may live a sacrificial life in worship of you. Lord, as we look around at all the hatred and war around the world, please... Please help us to remember to look forward to the day where there will be no more crying, pain, poverty or war. Please encourage us with your truth and eternal perspective amidst the sadness, pain, poverty and destruction. Please be with those who are suffering and give them relief and give them true hope. Hope. Please help those who are seeking seeking you and please help them find you. Heavenly Father, we look forward to the day of the Lord when you will take us home. And we, we ask you to reveal yourselves to more people throughout the world, especially those suffering at the moment, so they may too know and one day will be with us in your kingdom. I want, you to, bring, I want to bring before you Andrew, as he helps us to understand your word. Please be with him to give him the words to speak. Please help us to walk, to walk and do the words that are told, told us today. Let your word transform our minds, words and deeds. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our overseas partners, Ada and Claire, and their two, ch- two children who serve in Southeast Asia. We pray that you will comfort Ado this coming week as he awaits the decisions for a new problem with his lip. 
Thank you for his recent trip to Sydney and the ease with which he saw medical specialists. We pray that you again graciously heal him. Thank you, Lord, for the recent opportunities Ada and Claire have had to join with two other families in the community, to share their burdens, joys, and sharpen one another to see the kingdom growth in their, in their country. We pray with Ado and that he and Claire can be intentional with the way they serve and continue to walk humbly with you, their God. May their partnership with us in the gospel be effective in deepening our understanding that you desire all people to be saved and to come to your knowledge of the truth. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, through the Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority for all time and now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey church, my name is Rowan. Uh, I've got the privilege of doing the Bible reading tonight. So we've got two readings tonight. Our first one is Isaiah 40, 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, "Cry out," and I, and I said, "What shall I cry?" All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a higher mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And our second reading is 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, 13 to chapter 2, verse 3. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober... Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus, when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each, each person's works impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was with that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have some sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Let's 
Fantastic. My name's, uh, my name's Andrew. I'm the Andrew that Stephen prayed for. Um, he's my son. I was wondering whether he's going to pray for his earthly father. Um, I need it. Is this microphone on? Yeah, okay. Um, I just want to tell you something before I begin, and that is, uh, what combines the, what's the best food you can possibly eat? And there's a simple answer to that. I think the best food you can eat is Middle Eastern food. Okay, what combines the best food you can eat with um, an amazing opportunity at our doorstep, uh, and the nation's coming to us, and that is only 25 minutes away is the suburb of Lakemba. Uh, and something that actually on our heart... Um, earlier in the year, we actually put out a, uh, an appeal for some funds for Lakemba Anglican Church, and we just uh, we asked for a, a small amount, but a large amount was given. Um, I think more than three times as much as we asked for was actually given. Um, enough to uh, I can I can I can tell you I went there this week and uh, had a look at the that they got a new security system. Uh, because they had some attacks um, in the windows, and they've got cameras around everywhere, which is fantastic. And we actually raised enough to be able to support the church, uh, to f- the funding of the ministry for a full year for for the for this for the senior minister's uh, salary to keep going, which is just amazing. Um, and so that's a huge thing. Now the church sent us a letter, which we, we were sent around earlier. But one thing they've wanted to do for a little while is to invite us all for lunch. And so, if you would like to come to lunch at Lakemba in a couple of weeks' time on a Sunday uh, and just celebrate the work they've done. Um, it's going to be at 12.30 um, and uh, you need to RSVP so that we can just get our numbers and we can not scare them too much about how many are coming. But we would love to have anyone who wants to come, um, come and t- tell Denise at the office. You can email our office or you can go to our website and, and put a connect form in and just say, I want to come for lunch. You just, if you just do that, that would be absolutely fantastic. And so please, in a couple of weeks, combination, great food, combination, amazing ministry just at our doorstep and something that's been on uh, at least our church's heart, people responded to in huge ways. In June, $34,000 was given for the work of, of God in Lakamba, which is just astonishing. Um, we're going to look at God's word now, so why don't you... Um, Bow your heads with me. Look at this. This this art reminds us that we're shaped by hope. Out of the out of the mess of this world, uh, we're reaching uh, and transformed by the grace that's ahead of us. And let's pray that God would actually do His work in our lives today. Almighty God, we just we do thank you for your work in our lives, and we pray that your word would do its work today. Father, I pray that we would be inspired and encouraged and lifted up above ourselves for those who are seeking Christ, that they might find Christ. And for all of us, that we might just want to live more for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Shaped by Hope, a new exodus. Uh, One of the most majestic moments, one of the most breathtaking moments, one of the most world-defining moments of the whole Bible is the story of the exodus. That story when God heard the cry of his people. When God saw their misery in chains. And hard labor, when God sent a saviour, Moses, to the people, when God met Moses at a burning bush, and uh, and actually that's the first time in the Bible where the word holy appears, um, when God said this ground is holy ground, and God sent Moses to save his people. He redeemed them, he rescued them from slavery. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. And there was plague after plague after plague. It would have been amazing to be there. It would have been scary and terrifying to be there, wouldn't it, as well? But amazing to be there. And after nine plagues, there was the tenth plague. And the tenth plague was that God would send, I will send the angel of death and and take every firstborn in the land of Egypt. I remember once when I read that first with my own firstborn child, holding his hand, reading it, and I wasn't expecting it. But I teared up at that moment thinking, I'm holding the hands of my firstborn child, remembering this story that God would do this thing. But God saved his firstborn, the children of Israel. And um, remember, they had to eat a meal. They had to eat a meal in haste. They had some lamb, and they they painted over the door frames, and they painted over the, the sides of the door And they stayed inside their house, and when the angel passed over, everyone who had that blood of the lamb would be safe. 
And do you remember that next morning when Moses came up to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, take the people, get out of here. In fact, so much so that they took all of their gold and and rich objects and and they actually kind of, in a sense, plundered the people as they took them, uh, the the riches of Egypt away. And do you remember that moment where, where they left Egypt? This is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people left Egypt And Pharaoh changed his mind and chased after them with chariots. And they came to the Red Sea and Moses held his arm and the sea parted and they crossed over on on dry ground. And then when the the pursuing forces came through, it covered over. Remember that parting of the sea. Remember the Ten Commandments. Remember the call of God's people to be precious. Remember they're about to enter the promised land. How good is the Exodus story? And there's so much more we could say. And here we have a letter written to Christians by Peter. And we actually see see a new exodus appearing. We saw last week they were entering into a new inheritance, a promised land kept in heaven for you that can never perish, spoil, nor fade. Like the ancient Israelites wandering in the wilderness, they had to suffer grief of all sorts of kinds, but these came as so that the testing of their faith would be proven um, valuable and right. And we are called to rejoice in God in the face of these things rather than to grumble in the wilderness. Look at 117. It says here, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here with reverent fear. We're exiles, we're strangers, we're foreigners living in this world, wandering in this wilderness of this world. And we are waiting for an inheritance, but we call out to our father. And you notice what it says there? Call on your father who judges each person's work impartially. Live out your life as foreigners in reverent fear fear. Isn't it wonderful when you move from one book of the Bible to another? It doesn't change. Remember last term we looked at Proverbs? The beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. And the New Testament, it's exactly the same. Reverent fear, putting God as God, treating God as who He is, is the way to begin the life. To recognize, I am not God, I take myself off the throne and God is the one who sits on that throne. And look what he says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. This word redeemed, this word redeemed is one of the most important words in the Bible. So many good words in the Bible. Redeemed means set free from slavery. Sometimes we're going to hear all the Bible words and we get them all mixed up. And sometimes we think, well, it's just the vibe of them all. There was us, and there's what our future is, and saved, justified, reconciled, adopted, redeemed. These things moved us from this place to this place. But but I want to say each of them has a slightly different emphasis. Save me is a language. We were in trouble, and God fixed us up out of the trouble. Justified is the language of a court. We were going to be condemned forever and God made us right, declared us right before him. The, the language of reconciled is we used to be enemies and now we're friends. The language of adopted is the language of family. But this language of redeemed is we were, we were set free. It's the language God used of the, of the Exodus. Is I redeemed them from Egypt. They were slaves, and I set them free with my mighty hand and my outstretched arm. And we were set free, not to physical chains, but to mental chains and spiritual chains. To an empty way of life, it says, living for self. Or as Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And Jesus went on to say, and if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. How good is that? We are actually set free from an emptiness, from an empty way of living, from a meaninglessness, from a uselessness, from an empty religion. We've been set free from empty materialism where all that matters was just stuff, a bank account our things. We've been set free from wasteful greed. We've been set free from worship of ancestors. 
We've been set free from worship of the land or the sun or any other physical object. We've been set free so we can worship the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth. You were made by God and you were bought by God. How good is that? It's like a double form of love. God loved us so much that he made us and formed us and knit us together. And God loved us so much that when we made a mess and when we got trapped, he set us free by the thing that costs more than anything else. The price tag of the thing that's closest to the heart of God. You shall be free. If the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. He says, um, you are set free, not by silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The delivery of Egypt points to a freedom we have in Jesus. The language of Jesus is, is drawn from this. All of the language we as Christians know and love, a lot of it comes from this kind of idea. It comes from the picture of what God did when he delivered his people out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The, the language of redemption, of slavery, even the blood of the Lamb. You know, sometimes we sing songs about the blood of the Lamb. And, and, and they kind of, if you don't know what this is about, it seems crazy. Why are we singing a song about the blood of the Lamb? When was the last time I encountered the blood of a Lamb? Maybe when I was roasting something or cutting up some meat or went to Costco or whatever it was. Where, but he says here that actually we're, we're, we're saved by the blood of Christ. And this is why we celebrate the Passover, not remembering we were brought out of Egypt, but remembering we were brought out of slavery. And the new Exodus is actually greater than the old. Not just because it affects more people and more people from all nations are saved, but because of what we were saved by. What did it take to get them to, to, to be saved the first time? Just an ordinary lamb, actually a good lamb, a lamb without blemish or defect, like what, their best lamb. But for them to be saved, it was the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, so, you know, compared to all the gold in the world, all the silver in the world, all the money in the world, Christ is worth more. He, here's what's hard to put your head around. All, all, the, um, all, the, all the, 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 the GDP, every value of every nation added together not just the top ones but every single nation Christ's blood is worth more than all this more than the world more than the universe the blood of Jesus was the price tag that saved us so if their exodus was good and their exodus defined the beginning of the people if you meet a Jewish person today tell us what does it mean that God brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery and they will say that means everything but you meet a Christian person, whether they're Jewish or Gentile, you say, that is good, but something even greater, that Christ redeemed us from the empty way of living, a useless way of living, so that we can serve the living God. But this is the bit that gives me goosebumps. For the old points to the new, the old gives us the language of the new, and the new is greater than the old, but in the plan of God, in the priorities of eternity, the new exodus has deeper and earlier roots than the, than the old Exodus. Can you, get, can you understand that? He, he says, look, at when it was read, you might have noticed. Verse 20. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but revealed to these last times for your sake. The lambs that were chosen were chosen on the day or the day before for the Exodus, but God had chosen the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world, Jesus Christ, before the world even began. For those who love the, um, the, the, the line, the witch in the wardrobe, there is a deeper magic from before the dawn of time. There is something, and here is a deeper plan before the dawn of time. And we have new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And our faith is worth more than gold, and we believe in this because God raised Jesus from the dead. And so we're going to live as people bought with a great price tag. Verse 21, through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and a hope are in God. Well, get your minds ready for action. A new exodus. With all this in mind, we need to live as people who are redeemed from an empty way of living. Set free. If you don't know what the word redeemed, 
bought at a price. We're once slaves, now we're, we, we belong to God. A people who are receiving a promised land to come, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, nor fade. And the call for us in this passage, it, it's get your minds ready for action. The Christian life is not a life of passivity. The Christian life is not even just a life of reading the Bible and contemplating the universe. The Christian life is a life of action. It's a call to action if you read the Bible so you can get out there and act and and live and serve the living God. The Christian life is action, but a lot of the action happens in the mind. Verse 13, he says, what does it say? Therefore, with your minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. He's saying, if you can keep your eyes on something, you know, like if you're running a race, you want to keep your eyes on the end. I know people here, some people who are studying and they think, I want to quit. Probably everyone who's studying wants to quit. But what keeps you going is you look what happens at the end. I've got to get through these hard times and I can get through the end. Our HSC students are like that. Keep looking to the end. Keep seeing what's going to be ahead. But for us, for the Israelites, when they walk through the wilderness, keep remembering the promised land. We can go through the desert because we're going to enter the land flowing with milk and honey. And for us, keep your eyes, keep your mind on the grace to be revealed. I love that expression because we think about the grace. When is the grace of Jesus shown to us? The grace is shown to us in the past when Christ gave gave his life for us on the cross. The grace of God is shown to us in the present when we are given the Holy Spirit and a new life in Christ. But there is grace to come. There is going to be grace revealed. God's kindness and riches of his mercy will continue. If God didn't even hold back his son, how much will he not give us all things? And he says, set your hope on him. One of the things I love about this verse is that it's also linked with the Exodus. They were to eat the Passover and to see how God would save them, expecting his power. One of the little details about the original Passover is they were meant to eat with a staff in their hands and with their cloak tucked into their belt. Or or, or literally, they were meant to gird their loins so they were ready for action. With this, um, the exp- this expression, with lines, minds that are alert, is a very good translation of perhaps a more quaint version, which is from the King James Bible, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Okay, The idea is, is re- get yourself ready for action. If your mind um, was a body, get it ready for action. Um, it's, it's, an a- it's a word that's used for battle. If you want to go to battle and you're wearing a, a tunic, you've got to wrap it up. And so you can go to the battle. It's a word for men and for women for work. We looked at Proverbs 31 a few weeks ago. In Proverbs 31, the, the, the line that says, she sets about her work vigorously is literally, she girds her loins with strength. This is what we are to do when we are to act and we are to summon energy. Here's a picture of the expression. Um, it's a bit old school. Um, and it might be a bit overkill, actually. Uh, try to do this at home. Some people, I think, will just wrap it up once through, and some people will pull it up in the middle. And I'm sure there's many ways to gird the loins uh, and get into battle. But you see the idea. One way is, is, is just, I, I'm, I'm dressed to look good. And the other is, I'm dressed for action. Well, if we can do something with our minds, the call for us is to be focused and disciplined with our minds for alertness. Not just at the one-off meal, but as a posture. Gird the loins of your minds. I mean, get ready for action as God's children do it. As people who've been set free from empty way of living do it. This is Peter's equivalent to Paul's description of the Christian life. Um, you know, I, I won't go through in detail, but Romans 12 is loved and known by many people where he says, In view of God's mercy, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you can work out what God's will is. It's a beautiful summary of the Christian life. This one in Peter is so similar, isn't it? It says, With your minds girded for action, don't conform to your empty way of living, and be holy. Like the other one says, be a holy sacrifice. Um, a Christian life is about a mindset. It's about, it's about the strength and endurance to live as you have been saved. So what are you doing 
to fully focus on the grace to come. The ancient Israelites should have been focused on the promised land and their rescue. But what were they focused on? Their stomachs. (laughs) And they grumbled against God and against each other. They should have been focused on that land of milk and honey. And all they could think back is, didn't we eat better food in Egypt? Let's be people who focus on God's future grace for us all. The ancient Israelites cowered in fear at the face of the littlest opposition. They became like the nations around them, but they were called to be very different from the nations around them. Let us think differently to the nations around us. If you are thinking just like everyone else is thinking, it's probably not a Christian way of thinking. The Christian way of thinking will be very different from the world around us. It'll be different from the ebbs and tides of culture. It'll be different from what's popular and what's trendy. It's an eternal way of thinking. It's, it's, it's an ancient way of thinking, but it's always an ever new way of thinking. It's a way of thinking that renovates us. If we think about the issues of, of the world, we must not be like the nations around us. Don't be conformed. Don't think differently. Accept what God says that there are such things as men and women. Accept what God says that there is only one way to worship God, and that is through Jesus Christ. It is stay with God's word with courage and confidence and gladness. The ancient Israelites were meant to leave the idolatry of Egypt. What do they do? They built a golden calf in the wilderness. For us, we've got to get rid of idolatry, whether it's idolatry of materialism. That's one of them, greed. is what Jesus saw into our hearts and said, actually, that's probably the biggest problem for most of us. We need to be born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we need to not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Well, fourthly, save for holiness. Um, I said earlier on that the, the book of Exodus introduces us to the concept of holiness. Before Exodus, well, there's only one book before it, but there was no, the word holy, holiness, was not used. Holiness as an attribute of God was only revealed when Moses saw the bush that didn't burn. I, I was going to call it the burning bush. But it was a bush that was on fire, a flame, a blaze, but it didn't burn up. Uh, almost a symbol of God's presence with his people that he promised. I promise to be with you, but not destroy you. Uh, when, when Moses saw it, God said, this is holy ground. And in fact, this word holy becomes so important in the Exodus story. When God saved them and brought them to Mount Sinai, he says, you are to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. And several times God said to his people, be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. And it's not just the old Exodus that we're called to be holy. In fact, even more. If we've been saved by a bigger price tag, if we've been saved for a better purpose, then the holiness that God wants for us is bigger in the new Exodus than it was in the old. Look at verse 14. He says, As obedient children, don't conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. We've talked about that. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it's written, Be holy because I am holy. Holiness is God's godness. Being holy means being more and more belonging to God. Being holy means being more like Him in His moral excellencies. It doesn't mean being holy and and, and having um, unlimited power like God or all knowledge like God. It means means being belonging to God and being like God. I just want to say a couple brief things about this. One of them is holiness is possible. Now, I say that because a lot of us, when we read these passages, we say, actually, God's only telling us this to remind us of our sinful state and to remind us how impossible it is to be holy. But he's not telling us for that reason. He's telling us because he wants us to be holy as the Lord God is holy. Holiness is possible. It is possible. 
to be holy, not completely holy, not perfected in holiness, but to belong to God and live for God. God does not command us to do what we cannot. Verse 15, he says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Live for God. Well, how is that possible? I think this is very important. It's possible because holiness calls us to be what God has made us already. In English, we have... um, bunch of words for holiness we have all the words like holy holiness we have a bunch of other words like sanctified saint sanctification and we have other words like purify but in the original language it was one word a holy person be holy be made holy holify if we can make up a word Um, and, and so the call for us is to be what we are We saw it last week, chapter 1, verse 2. You've been chosen through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. You've been holified. You've been made holy by the Holy Spirit. So the call for the Christian life is never to be what you're not. The call for the Christian life is always be what you are. Um, we, We see it later in the reading in chapter 1, verse 22. Now that you've been purified, it's literally now that you've been made holy by obeying the truth. Do these things. Live out what you are. You are a holy people. Live like it. I mean, we are a holy people. Because of all the people on earth, God said, for whatever reason, and what it, it's, it's not because of our goodness, God's looked and, and said, these people who, are, who belong to Jesus are my holy people, my treasured possession. They are set apart. They are my children. They are special in my sight. And so the call for us is to live like children of God, live like holy people, live as we are. Some Christians have made dreadful mistakes in this. And I think sometimes we do as well. Some Christians have said there are particular holy people, let's call them saints, and everyone else will call them ordinary people. But the Bible says that everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ is a saint. You don't have to die and have miracles prayed over you, cause a few miracles to happen after you've died. God says everyone who is one of Jesus' person is a saint. How amazing is that? If you met someone who is reportedly called a saint, you'd want to treat them well, wouldn't you? Well, shouldn't you treat your brothers and sisters well, who are also God's saints and God's holy people? So, So the call for us is, is to live as we are, live as we're called. We, 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 we're called to live like it. That's actually our real identity in Jesus Christ. Holiness is also related to us being God's children. It's, um, you know, one of the... When God says, be holy because the Lord, I, the Lord, am God, am holy, the next verse after in Leviticus 19.2 says, and each, um, each one should respect their own father and mother. Now, he took an earthly father and mother, but how much more should we respect, if we are called to be holy, our heavenly father? That's, that's Holiness is relational. A good child of a good parent wants to be like all the honorable things of their parents. And this is what we're meant to do in our priorities, in being different to the culture. Remember that holiness is about being a child of the father. And lastly, I want to say on holiness is um, holiness leads us to love each other. I think sometimes we have a view of holiness that almost puts holiness and love at opposite ends. You know, there are some Christians who are really good at being loving and there are some Christians who are really holy and they withdraw from everything and they they look down at everyone. That is the fake holiness of the Pharisees. That is the kind of holiness that Jesus says is like a whitewashed tomb with nothing good inside you. God's described as a few things. He's described as light. God is light. God is described as God is love. There's one in here. The Lord is good. And God is holy. And the more holy we are, the more we grow to be like the holy God. A holy person is one who loves one another. The holy person does not pull away from God's people and thinks themselves better than God's people. The holy person, what does he say here? 
22, now that you've holified yourself, purified yourself by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. We live in the light. We've got to live more and more in the light of God's truth. We live in God's goodness. We've got to taste and see that the Lord is good. But we've also got to live as holy people who, who see that holiness, that the more holy we are, the more loving we are to other people. Earlier I said we need to be different from our world. Here's a really key way for us to be different from our world. You, you might have thought, okay, what's, what's Peter's bottom line going to be? You think, you know what? I reckon Peter is going to address sexuality. That's the key for, for holiness. Or, or he might address idolatry, only worshipping the true God. Now those are important things. But what he says is, therefore rid yourself of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, envy, and slander of every kind. And then like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual meat. Those things will rob us of growing in holiness. Slandering people. Watch what we say. Build people up. Don't rob people's reputations. Don't be envious, but treat people well. Live as God's people. Well, a new exodus. We wait inheritance. We've been redeemed in a price. I, I love it. Like if you, if you read the story of the exodus, think of yourself into the story as well and think, this is a wonderful picture. It's, it, it's, it's, it's still a fact and a reality that God saved his people out of Egypt. He made the people of Israel, of which we are all benefit, beneficiaries of. But he's actually saved us at a price of the blood of the Lamb. And we have symbols like the Lord's Supper. We remind ourselves of that salvation. We have baptism which kind of reminds us of the crossing of the Red Sea. Here's a, here's a plug I'll do. Are you interested in baptism? Uh, maybe you've become a Christian recently. Maybe only the last few weeks. Maybe a little while ago. You, you said, you know what? I, I want to publicly declare that I am one of God's holy people. That I am someone who is bought by the blood of the Lamb. That I'm someone who has put their hope in the Lord. And so if that's you, can I encourage you to speak to me or speak to Andrew Hartman or, or contact, ask someone you've come with. Um, can I ask you to pray about it, actually, even more importantly? Speak to God about it. And, and maybe for you, if you haven't been baptized, maybe this is the next step for you. But whatever we are, remember the price tag of our redemption. And don't go back into the empty way of living. It's not just the beginning, it's all of our lives. We've got to gird our minds. Can I use that really quaint expression? We've got to gird the loins of our minds. We've got to get ready for action, whatever that means. We, 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 we can't be here just chilling. Chilling. Before, for, for the rest of our lives, we're waiting for Christ. No, get, get ready for Christ. Think carefully. Don't just take things in. Love God's word. Listen to God's word. In fact, crave pure spiritual milk so that you can grow up in your salvation now that you've tasted that the Lord is good. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Particularly, we pray that you would help us to remember the, the price tag that saved us. The lamb chosen before the beginning of time. Thank you for saving us from an empty way of living. An empty way of living in false spiritualities or materialism or, or just chasing after pleasure or money or, or just emptiness. And thank you that you saved us so that we can worship you in spirit and truth. And, and Father, we do pray that you would help us to gird our minds for action and to be holy. But we pray that the holiness that we have would not be a holiness of the Pharisees but a holiness of Jesus that causes us to love people without slander and envy and hypocrisy, but to do so with truth. And let's pray for anyone who's new to Christian things that they might continue to grow up in their salvation. In fact, all of us, now that we've tasted you, you are good. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Andrew. So please stand and sing with us.
darkness rejoice as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in hand. When death was rested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made a new now life begins with you. It's your Awesome. Thanks heaps, Musos, and thanks, Andrew, for bringing us the word tonight. Um, that was a fantastic reminder that we have been redeemed by God, and therefore we are to live like God's children, to be holy. Um, a, quick, a quick couple of reminders tonight, since I butchered some of the earlier announcements. This Monday, we have a Summerfest Info Night meeting. Starts here at church at 7.30. Also, Christianity Explored is on Tuesday night. Um, that's where if you want to find out more about Jesus, look at Mark's Gospel. Um, so both of those things are great things coming up. And then spring into prayer, of course, is tomorrow afternoon. Um, guys, board games tonight. I'm super excited. Hang around. I'll go get dinner, then come back. Hang around. We'll have some fun. I heard Jungle Speed. I heard... Uh, Secret Hitler. I heard there's other fun games here. If you don't know what that game is, it's, it's not, not what it sounds like, guys. It's not what it sounds like. That's, that's shocking. Um, all right. We're going to hang around, have some supper together, um, have some good conversation. I encourage you guys to chat to someone new tonight. Um, I'm going to pray, then we can hang out. Dear Lord, um, we thank you for your son. We thank you for Jesus. Um, thank you that uh, through him we can find life, that we're redeemed and we're saved, Lord. Um, we ask that you help us to live like uh, God's children, Lord. Help, help us to live holy lives. Help us to throw away things which easily tangle us, Lord, um, and just to put um, our life down each day for you, Lord. Uh, we pray as we spend time together now. Um, we thank you for the hands that have prepared the food. We pray that you bless our conversation and we pray that we can have some fun playing board games, Lord. I um, pray these things in your name. Amen. See you next week, guys.